on the 28th of March, BJP leader Tejinder Pal Singh Bagga issued a tweet about the makeup of the word Vaheguru. And this is what he wrote. Va, meaning the first syllable, stands for Vishnu Vasudev from Satyog. The second syllable, He, comes from Hari Krishna of Dwapar. The third syllable, Gu, depicts Guru Gobind from Kaljog. And the final syllable, Ru, represents Ram from Treta. His point was that the word Vaheguru was actually constructed from the names of Hindu Devi Devdas and that this was true if the individual letters of the word, the W, the H, the G and the R were taken into consideration. The root of the word Vaheguru was therefore Sanatan. That was in essence Bhagas point. The next day, the Delhi Minorities Commission sent a letter to SGPC. The letter reads, in essence, Sir, the Minorities Commission has taken notice of the tweet of the Jindrapal Singh Bhaga in which his definition of Vaheguru appears to be objectionable and not as per Sikhism or Sikh Maryada. I am directed to request you to kindly clarify the meaning of Vaheguru as per Sikhism or Sikh Maryada. If it is contrary to the tweet of the Pal Singh Bhaga, the Minorities Commission will initiate action against Mr. Tejinder Pal Singh Bhaga as per law. The local newspapers carried the report of it all. Here is a report from the Rosanna spokesman. It is titled, New Controversy Through a Tweet Over Vaheguru. Minorities Commission asks SGPC to clarify the meaning of the word Vaheguru. The SGPC was given two days to respond. It did. Here is a tweet by SGPC saying it has responded. It reads, SGPC was asked to shed light on Sikh principles by the Delhi Minorities Commission after it took offense of a social media post by BJP leader Tejinder Pal Singh Bhaga within which he compared the word Vaheguru to Hindu Devi Devdas. Information has been sent. Now, for whatever reason, the SGPC did not reveal the nature or substance of the information it sent. So, we will not know what SGPC said about the definition of the word Vaheguru until they decide to tell us. In uh, 2022, I wrote an editorial for the Sikh Bulletin titled, When Our Lies Become the Truths of Others. You can read the essay in the link provided below. The gist of the essay is that Sikh literature, especially what we mistakenly call classical Sikh literature, is full of untruths of Sikhi. Some 35 primary grants that make up this so-called classical Sikh literature are overflowing with false assertions and distortions about Sikhi. These 35 grants have been composed by Banaras-trained and Banaras-based Nirmalas for the purposes of corrupting, distorting and hijacking Sikhi. Their primary objective was to deprive Sikhi of its unique principles, to hollow out Sikhi from within, and to take Sikhi back to 1468, meaning to take it back to the belief systems that existed prior 
to the birth of Guru Nanak in 1469. The primary objective is to reinstate and reinstall on the pedestal of Sikhi and Gurmat beliefs that were rejected by Guru Nanak. These so called classical grunts, the Janam Sakis, the Surja Prakash, the Bansavali Nama, Pagatamal, Gorbelas, Parshai Shemi, Sarbalo, and the entire gamut of it were written in the 135 year period of 1765 till 1900 when Nirmalas were in control of Sikh Gurdwaras and Sikh institutions. The Sikh reform movement of the 1920s, or what we call the Singh Sabha Lahir, had alerted the Sikh world towards the need to discard, clean out, and rewrite these grants. The argument of the Singh Sabha was that if the Sikh Panth did not do exactly that, then these lies, these fabrications, these concoctions and these untruths will become the truths of Sikhi and worse, they will become the truths of the anti-Sikh elements. Instead of doing what the Sikh reform movement asked, the Sikh world especially our clergy, have accepted these 35 and more grants as true and actual depictions of Sikhi. The Sikh world has already paid half the price, wherein the lies, fabrications, concoctions and untruths of the so-called classical grants have become rooted as the truths of Sikhi. Now we are beginning to pay the greater price where these lies and untruths are becoming the truths of anti-Sikh elements. This video, therefore, Piario, seeks to explain the tweet the BJP leader and the letter of the Minorities Commission within the context of the lies, the distortions, and the fabrications pertaining to the word Vaheguru that are contained within these so-called classical texts. The lies, distortions and fabrications that are contained within our texts that have now begun to become the truths of others like the BJP leader, the Jindrapal Singh Bhaga, and the Minorities Commission. Now, if we ask the Sikh world as to what the name of God that was given to us by Guru Nanak or by Gurbani within the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji is, a full 100% of Sikhs will say the word is Vaheguru. You will agree that the word is everywhere in Sikhi. It is sung, it is chanted, it is recited, it is printed, framed and hung, it is tattooed. It is everywhere, in everything. Every Sikh accepts the word Vaheguru as given to us by our Guru, by Gurbani, by the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji as the name of God. Our clergy our Ragis, Kirtanyas, Granthis, Pracharaks, Tadis, our writers, thinkers, poets, etc. have presented us evidence of this. Here is one piece of the evidence. Sar Mantar Charon Ka Char Vaheguru Mantar Nirdhar Kalapa Kalapa Prat Akshar Kahi Sri Guru Nanaka Japeo Sahi. The translation, the supreme mantra for the four ages, Vaheguru mantra is the savior. Contemplation upon contemplations resulted 
in the putting together of the alphabets. Guru Nanak put the alphabets together and Guru Nanak caused it to be chanted, meaning that it was Guru Nanak who gave us the word Vaheguru as the name of God and gave it to the world, the spiritual world for chanting. Very convincing indeed. What we call solid proof, indisputable evidence. There is Pyareo, however, one major problem with this evidence. The problem is that these verses are not Gurbani. They do not exist within the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. They are taken from one of the 35 Granths of our so-called classical Sikh literature I spoke of earlier. The name of the Granth which contains these verses is Sarb Lo Granth, literally the complete iron Granth. The message of these verses from within this complete iron Granth contradicts the messages of Gurbani. Now, why do I say that? Well, Guru Nanak has 947 Shabads comprising some 5,600 verses in the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. How many times do you think he used the word Vaheguru in these Shabads and these verses? The answer is zero times. Not at all. Not even once. So, if Guru Nanak did not use the word Vaheguru even once in his entire Bani, not for God, not for anything at all, how could he have undertaken contemplation upon contemplations that resulted in the putting together of its individual alphabets, Kalapa, Kalapa, Prat, Akshar, Kahi? Guru Nanak did not use the word Vaheguru even once in his entire Bani. How then could he have caused it to be chanted? As is the claim in the Sarbalo Grantha Sri Guru Nanak Jabayo Sahi. So the assertions of the so-called classical Granth that Vaheguru was the supreme mantar for the four ages, that Vaheguru was the saviour mantar, that contemplation upon contemplations resulted in the putting together of its alphabets, that Guru Nanak put the alphabets together and Guru Nanak caused it to be rightly chanted is fake, is an untruth, is a concoction, is a distortion. Now, it sounds painful to know the reality of our classical texts, but that is perhaps why the adage exists that the truth hurts. So, Guru Nanak did not use it even once in his entire Bani within the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. What about Guru Angad Ji? Well, Guru Angad Pacha has 63 saloks comprising approximately 250 verses. He too did not use the word Vaheguru even once in his entire Bani. Not for God, not for anything at all. Guru Amar Das Ji has 869 Shabbats comprising some 5,100 verses in the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. How many times do you think he used the word Vaheguru in these Shabbats and verses. The answer is zero times, not at all, not even once. The fourth Guru, Ramdas Parshaji, has 638 Shabbats comprising 3,800 verses. He too did not use the word Vaheguru even once in his entire Bani, not for God, not for anything at all. The fifth Guru, Arjanji, 
has the most voluminous bani in the sri guru granth sahib ji 2313 shabads comprising approximately 13900 verses how many times do you think he used the word wahi guru in these shabads and verses the answer is zero times not at all not even once the ninth guru teg bahadur ji has 115 shabads comprising some 690 verses he too did not use the word wahi guru even once in his entire bani not for god not for anything at all all 15 pagats combined have 788 shabads comprising approximately 4000 verses 3 six have 11 shabads comprising about 100 verses and none of them used the word wahi guru even once in this entire bani not for god not for anything at all so pyareo the total for gurus pagats and sikhs is 5714 shabads comprising some 30000 verses within which the word wahi guru does not appear even once but all the 35 so called classical grants all composed by nirmalas from banaras but now accepted as sikh classical literature tell us that the name of god within sikhi is wahi guru and then they tell us about the greatness of the word wahi guru nirmala kavi santok singh tells us of the greatness in his granth the suraj prakash the suraj prakash granth is the most massive and most voluminous granth that covers the life of all 10 gurus and is a colossal enormous source of distortion corruption and falsehoods about sikhi its author nirmala santok singh has the following composition in his surj prakash granth telling us that the word wahi guru is composed from alphabets taken from the names of hindu gods he writes vava vas dev se lino meaning the letter vava was taken from vas dev hari kishan te ha ha chino the letter ha ha from hari vishnu gaga gobind te le jane gobind provided the letter gaga rara ram chand man mane and rara came from ram chand the next couplet advocates the benefits of doing such an act chatar baran ke ek banaya meaning the four letters wa wa ha ha rara and gaga were put together to create the word wahi guru phal daayak e adak sohaya it is an extremely useful productive and beautiful word chatar naam samran ke eko chanting this one word allows for the chanting of four names vishnu krishna ram chandar and govind ur dare jis hot babeku one who chants with focus will obtain wisdom the nirmalas did more than just writing scores of grants that distorted corrupted and adulterated sikhi concepts they also corrupted other non nirmala sikh literature by fraudulently adding their own stuff to writings such as ratnamas and the writings of pai gurdas ji they could do all of this with impunity because they controlled our gurdwaras our institutions our history our literature and by extension the sikh psyche 
for 250 years. For example, let's take a look at the first war of Pai Gurdas Ji. The Sikhi related subject matter of War 1, for instance, as can be expected, begins with the coming of Guru Nanak from Para 23 onwards. Guru Nanak Jag Mahe Pathaya. The advent of Guru Nanak. The next 25 paras outline the life and travels of Guru Nanak, both within India and outside. The next three paras talk about the succession of guruship from Guru Nanak to Gurus Angad, Amardas, Ramdas, Arjan and Hargobindji. The final para then, body number 49, out of nowhere, suddenly brings in Vishnu, Krishan and Ramchandar. One wonders if Pai Gurdasas writing style is so disjointed that he parachutes these unrelated entities into his first war. It is clear that this final para or final paudi is added on by someone. It is smuggled into his writing by somebody. Anyway, the full para is Satyog Satgur Vasudev Vava Visna Nam Japave Dwapar Satgur Hari Krishna Haha Harhar Nam Tiave Trete Satgur Ramji Rara Ram Jape Sukhave Kaljog Nanak Guru Govind Gagga Govind Nam Japave Chare Jage Chau Jogi Panchayan Vich Jai Samave Charo Achar Ekkar Vaheguru Chap Mantar Japave so, Sikhs are expected to believe that this is Pai Gurdas, the Sikh luminary and Sikh philosopher explaining the makeup of the word Vaheguru by breaking it down to the letters Vava, Haha, Gaga, Rara or V, H, G and R. So he says, we came from the Satguru of Satyoga, Vasudev, Vishnu. H came from the Satguru of Dwapar, Hari Krishan. R came from the Satguru of Treta, Ramchandar. And G came from Govind of Kaljog. We are further expected to accept that Pai Gurdas then declares that Guru Nanak combined the four letters into Vaheguru and caused the mantra of Vaheguru to be chanted by the world. Charo achar ek kar Vaheguru jap mantra japave. Meaning, the four letters were combined into Vaheguru and caused to be chanted. The degree of anti Sikhi, anti Gurmat, an anti-Gurbani content of this one single para is staggering. The more pertinent mind-boggling questions are as follows. First, would the real Pai Gurdas ever refer to Vishnu, Krishna and Ramchandar as Sadguru? These are the verses under his name. Satyog Satgur Vasudev Vava Visana Nam Japave Dwapar Satgur Hari Krishan Haha Harhar Nam Tiave Trete Satgur Ramji Rara Ram Jape Sukhapave Were these three the Satgurus of Pai Gurdas Ji? Who else but a Banaras trained and Banaras based Nirmala? could infiltrate such a claim into the writings of Paiji. Second, would the real Pai Gurdas ever decide to not use the word Sadguru for Guru Nanak and Guru Gobind within the same para where Hindu gods are referred to as Sadguru? Kaljog Nanak Gaur Gobind Gagga Gobind Nam Japave 
everyone else is Sadhguru, but when it comes to Guru Nanak, it's just Kaljog Nanak. Is this characteristic of Pai Gurdas Ji? Third, the letter H comes from Krishan, really? How did a name that begins with K, Krishan, end up producing a haha in H? Krishan Ji has many names, none of which start with the letter H. If indeed one name did start with the letter H, then that name ought to have been mentioned in the appropriate verse in this para. No one in the Indian spiritual world refers to Krishan as Hari Krishan. As such, this is an attempt to fit Krishan with a K into the letter H of Vaheguru. Surely, Pai Gurdas Ji would do no such ridiculous thing. Fourth, how did the real Pai Gurdas know that Guru Gobind Singh Ji would be the final Guru in the Nanak lineage? He says, Kaljog Nanak Gur Gobind Gagga Gobind Naam Japave. Pai Gurdas Ji passed on during the era of the sixth Guru. This is evidence that this para was composed and added on after the era of Guru Gobind Singh Pacha. Fifth, why would the real Pai Gurdas write a lie under his name that Guru Nanak caused the mantra of Vaheguru to be chanted? Charo achar ek kar Vaheguru jap mantra japave. He knew that Guru Nanak did not use the word Vaheguru even once in his entire Bani within the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Neither did Gurus Angad, Amardas, Ramdas and Arjan. Neither did any of the 15 Bhagats. Sixth, Pai Gurdas Ji knew that our Gurus had rubbished the notion of Sat Yoga, Dwapara, Treta and Kal Yoga as being a measure of the periods of times or eras. So why is Pai Gurdas Ji mentioning it in every verse of this final body? Satyoga Satgur Vasdev, Dwapara Satgur Hari Krishan, Trete Satgur Ramji, Kaljoga Nanak Gurgovind. Pai Ji was fully aware that Guru Nanak had critiqued such a notion in Asadivar. All of the above six points are dead giveaways that this final body, body number 49, is added on much later by the Nirmalas in their attempt to adulterate and corrupt Sikhi. The real Pai Gurdas could not be the author of such a deeply problematic Body and its deeply problematic verses. He could not have authored this body. The other point worth noting is that this body is found within Nirmala literature, especially the Surj Prakash of Nirmala Santok Singh, although with some very minor differences. There is plenty of distortion and corruption of the other 39 wars of Pai Gurdas Ji as well. A large portion of the subject matter of his wars is contrary to Gurmat and Gurbani. This is a matter for Sikh writers, Sikh intellectuals and Sikh researchers to take up, primarily because the Sikh Rath Maryada accepts the writings of Pai Gurdas Ji to be fit for rendering as Kirtan. It is worth noting, however, that we do not have a single original writing of Pai Gurdas. The first time his writings were brought out into the open were upon a claim by Nirmala Gyani Hazara Singh, who claimed that he had somehow discovered them. He and his grandson, Nirmala Pai Veer Singh would then go on to do translations of these wars and present it to the Sikh Panth. 
the inclusion of Pai Gurdas's wars into the Sikh Rath Maryada is also primarily the job of Nirvala Pai Veer Singh, who was a leading member of the SRM formulation committee. Then, Pyareo, there is the issue of God's name in Sikhi. The foundational principle regarding God's name is found in this verse on page 1083 of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Kirtam naam kathe tere jeba sat naam tera para purbala. All the names that I utter kathe tere jeba are descriptive of your virtues kirtam naam. Your foundational para purbala a virtue naam is that you are eternal and permanent sat. So we can derive the following nine foundational principles pertaining to the name of God. One, he has no proper name. Two, his names are given by his children, Pagats. Three, all his names are Kirtam, descriptions of his perceived virtues or their adjectives. Number four, all such perceived virtues are acceptable. Five, one virtue cannot be superior to the other. Six, his primary virtue within Gurbani is Sat. Sat from the Sanskrit word Satya, meaning permanently in existence. The Guru Granth Sahib thus begins with Ekvankar Satanam. This virtue is considered primary because if we don't accept that he is indeed in existence, then the other virtues become irrelevant. 7. The debate of his one name is futile and rejected because we humans created all his names. Number 8. All names are acceptable. 9. All names are used in the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. From the Puratan tradition, we have Har and Ram, for example. From the Muslim tradition, we have Allah and Rahim and Khuda. From the Yogi tradition, we have Alk, we have Naranjan. From the Pagdi tradition, we have names like Beetle, Raya. From the personal tradition, we have names of, for God such as Pita, Mata, Pritam, Beloved, etc. Here is a Shabd from page 727 of the Seguru Granth Sahib Ji. All the words in yellow are names of God. Main andale ki teka tera naam khundakara. Main garib, main maskeen. Tera naam hai adhara rahao. Karima, Rahima, Allah, tu gani. Hazra, Hazur, Dharpesh, tu mani. Daryao, tu, Dehend, tu, Bisyar, tu, dani. Deh, le, ek, tu, Degar, ko, nahi. Tu, dana, tu, bina, me, bichar, kya, kari. Name che Swami Bakshanda Tu Hari. Here is another one from page 1165. Again, the words in yellow are names of God. Sultan Puche Sonabe Nama Deko Rama Tomare Kama. Nama Sultane Bandala Deko Tera Har Beetla Rahao. Rudan kare name ki mai chod ram ki na paje khudaye. Na ho tera pungada na tu meri mai pend pade to har gunagaye. But the so called classical text first, and now our clergy who are schooled in this so called classical texts, and our deras and our taksals, which are steeped 
in Nirmala thought and who train and produce our clergy based on these Nirmala texts insist that in the Sikh world, Vaheguru is the name of God. We know that Guru Nanak never used the word Vaheguru even once in his 5,600 plus verses that make up of his 947 shabars in the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Guru Angad did not use the word even once in his entire Bani. Neither did Gurus Amardas, Ramdas, Arjan and Tegh Bahadur across the entire Bani of 3,935 Shabbats covering 23,490 verses. Neither did the Pagats in any of their 788 Shabbats. But our clergy point to four Shabbats of the Pats who use the phrase Wah Guru and Vahe Guru. So, who are the Pats? Here are the basics about the Pats. The word Pater translates as bards, songsters, lyricists or poets. There were ten of them who were followers of Krishanji before they came before Guru Arjanji in search of their spiritual objectives. They are said to have stayed in the Sangat of the Guru for some two years. They composed Patandi Bani 123 Savaye or paragraphs in total across 20 pages within the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. All of their Bani is in praise of the Guru Shabbat. The phrase Vahe Guru and Vaha Guru is used in four of these 123 paras. Here is one Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Jiyo. The meaning of it is O oh Guru, Wondrous Guru, Magnificent Guru, Wow. The final verse of this para is Sat Saj Sri Nivas Ad Purk Sada Tuhi. Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Jiyo. Meaning, the creator whose existence is permanent resides within you, O Guru, wondrous Guru, magnificent Guru, Wow. Va means great, magnificent. Vahe means O great, O magnificent, great Guru. Magnificent Guru, Wow Guru. The phrase Vaguru is actually a combination of two words from two distinctly different languages, making it improbable to be combined as a proper name. Va comes from Persian and Guru originates from Sanskrit. More importantly, Pyareo, Va is an exclamation. Its utterance is involuntary. So the parts are expressing their wonder at the Guru by saying Vah Guru. So to a Sikh, the word Vah Guru would mean O Guru, O Wondrous Guru, O Magnificent Guru. But the 35 so-called classical texts and our clergy who are schooled in this Nirmala texts insist that in the Sikh world, Vah Guru is the name of God. But the same ten parts also used Sri Guru nine times, Sat Guru twenty-five times, and Guru Guru fifteen times. Here are the relevant paragraphs: Sri Guru, Sri Guru, Sri Guru, Sat Jio. Nam Sach Hiye Thar Taj Bekar Man Gayand Sri Guru, Sri Guru, Sri Guru, Sat Jio. And Sadguru, 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 Gobind Jiyo, Naam Sar Hiye Tar, Taj Bikar, Man Gayand, Sadguru, 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 Gobind Jiyo. In essence, then, when the Pats use Vaheguru, Sadguru, Sri Guru in their Bani, they are using these phrases to call out or refer to Guruji. They are using these phrases to express the greatness the magnificence, the awe and the amazement of Guruji. 
and when the parts talk of god they do not use vahi guru sat guru or shri guru all of which refer to the guru and this is what they use when they talk of god agam anant anad ad jis koi na jane nirankar nirvair avar nahi dusar koi shri sat naam karta purakh गुर रामदास चित बस है दे रिफर टू गॉड एस निरंकार नरवैर एस सतनाम करता पुरख दीज आर द सेम नेम्स द सेम डिस्क्रिप्टिव नेम्स कीर्तम नाम दैट गुरु नानक यूसस इन द कमेंसिंग वर्स ऑफ द श्री गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब जी सो द क्वेश्चन फॉर द राइटर्स ऑफ द थर्टी फाइव और सो classical texts and grants and our clergy is this if we are going to let the parts dictate what the proper name of god is then why is sri guru not the name of god why is sat guru not the name of god why why guru all these three sri guru sat guru and vahi guru are used by the parts in the same one page of the sri guru granth sahib ji all in paragraphs one after another to refer to the guru in the same poetic systematic manner for the banaras based dharmalas it could not be sri guru because it did not have the vava for vishnu and the ha ha for hari krishna it could not be sat guru either because satguru to did not have the vava for vishnu and the ha ha for hari krishna they wanted to infiltrate the vishnu the krishan and ram into the psyche of sikhi at all costs so it had to be vai guru and they wrote that into their classical texts concocted stuff such as this one sar mantar charon ka char vai guru mantar nirdhar the supreme mantar for the four ages vai guru mantar is the savior contemplation upon contemplation resulted in the putting together of its alphabets now the part about the putting together of the alphabets is the dead in gave away the nirmalas were interested in the alphabets the vava and the ha ha and in putting these alphabets squarely within the parameters of sikhi and they wrote the following concocted make up of vai guru into their texts vava vas dev se lino hari krishan te ha ha chino gagga gobind te jano harara ram chand man mano and they adulterated the first var of pai gurdas ji by adding the final out of context body as satyog satgur vasudev vava visna naam japave dwapar satgur hari krishan ha ha har har naam tyave trete satgur ram ji rara ram jape sukh pave kal jog nanak gur gobind gagga gobind naam japave that we came from the satguru of satyog vasudev vishnu h came from the satguru of dwapar hari krishan r came from the satguru of treta ramchandar and g from gobind of kal jog and these hijackers of sikhi concocted another non gurbani term namely gur mantar they quote a verse from pai gurdas ji from war 13 which reads vahe guru guru mantar hai jap ho main khoi and misinterpreted to mean the word vahe guru is a gur mantar chant it to eliminate your ego this is not the correct translation the correct interpretation of this verse is o wondrous guru vahe guru you guru a my mantar realizing you jap i have eliminated my ego these are two separate words here guru and mantar only if one wrongly considered it 
as one word would one come up with Gaur Mantar or Guru Mantar? I want to conclude by reverting to the tweet by BJP leader Tejinder Pal Singh Bhaga in which he defines the makeup or construction of the word Vaheguru. You will agree with me that he has accepted our lies as his truths, the lies within our Surja Prakash, the lies within our Sarbalo and the lies within 33 other grunts have become Bhagga's truths. The Jinder Pal Singh Bhagga has accepted as his truths the distortions, corruption and concoctions that are contained within our so-called Nirmala composed classical grunts. And that is because we Sikhs allowed these distortions corruption and concoctions to stand. We Sikhs accepted the so-called classical grunts, made them into our textbooks, wrapped them in Romalas, carried them above our heads, put them under palkis and chananis, and did their katha in our Gurdwaras. In other words, we Sikhs sanctioned the lies of the Banarasi Nirmalas. We put a stamp of approval on these lies. What about the letter by the Delhi Minorities Commission to SGPC? Is this letter really what it appears to be? Genuinely giving SGPC and Sikhs a chance to explain the word Vahiguru? Or is it asking Sikhs to admit that the lies and fabrications contained within their classical texts have caught up with the rest of the world? Is the latter really wanting evidence to take action against Bhaga of BJP or wanting to validate Bhaga by getting us Sikhs to admit that what Bhaga tweeted is according to the Surj Prakash Granth, the one that is carried on the head and discoursed in the Darbar Sahib complex in Gurdwara Manji Sahib of all places on a daily basis. There are thousands of anti-Sikh tweets and posts daily in the social media. But to take one tweet and within 24 hours ask SGPC to respond in 48 hours is the display of concern and efficiency that cannot possibly be to the benefits of Sikhs. So the language of the letter may be whatever, but it has to be read this way. O oh, people of SGPC and O Sikhs, the Jantar Pal Singh Bhaga has, through Sikh classical grunts, exposed the lie of your claim that Sikhi is unique. It has now been established that apart from almost everything else that you practice, even the word Vaheguru does not belong to you. Finally, I want to say this. What Jajinder Pal Singh Bhaga of BJP has exposed is just one lie that is found in Sikh classical literature grants, all of which are written by the Banarasi Nirmalas. By my own personal count, there are tens of thousands more such lies waiting to be exposed and flung at us Sikhs to challenge the notion that Sikhi is unique. Pyareo, the Sikhi of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji is unique indeed. It is pure. It is unadulterated by the pre-1469 belief systems. But the Sikhi of our classical grunts, the Sikhi of Surj Prakash, the Sikhi of Sarbalo, of Gorbalas, Parshai, Shevi, etc. is distorted, corrupted and adulterated. The choice is ours. If we want to adopt the Sikhi of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji or that of Surj Prakash, if we want to adopt 
the Sikhi of Guru Nanak or that of the Banarasi Nirmalas. What the Jandarapal Singh Bhaga has exposed is the tip of the iceberg of corruption, distortion, lies and fabrications that are sitting there in our so-called Sikh classical literature. This iceberg is huge, very huge.